Hello guys, welcome back to Conifera. Uh, upfront, I apologize if my voice is a little rough. I'm still uh, on the, the end of a, a long fight with the flu or something like that. Um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of tired, but I, I, I just wanted to create something. I, I couldn't wait, so um, yeah. Today we're gonna work in uh, Port Douglas because we are finally going to be uh, starting the work on our quite uh, ambitious port projects. Um, if you guys have seen previous episodes, you'll know that uh, the port is gonna be one of the defining characteristics of our regional capital. And it was also one of the primary reasons that settlers choose to uh, settle here and create an urban establishment in the first place. Um, it's a great natural port and we're gonna, we're gonna work in this area today. It's probably gonna stretch across multiple episodes because I, well, for one, I think it's gonna be quite an ambitious and big project. Uh, and and second, and this is a bit of a disclaimer as well. I'm sorry, but it's been it's been quite a while since I, since I've done like a real industrial port, and I haven't ever really done a good detailed container port. Uh, yeah, as far as I recall, at least. So it's going to be a lot of trial and error here, and I'm probably going to have to to uh, come back to this area and fix up a, a few things uh, afterwards. Before we get going with the port, I'd like to show a few small uh, off-camera builds I've been doing so that you guys are completely up to speed with everything we've been uh, building. So um, I've just filled out this small area here near the highway in Port Douglas. I used procedural objects mod to kind of squash this uh, residential tower together, taking taking out a few floors. Then I used node controller and parking lot roads to create this, um, I guess you could say custom, custom parking lot with some PO planters as well. And I kind of like how that, that all turned out. Um, for the, the second off-camera build, we are moving all the way to Northern Pine Harbor, where I built the, uh, the small, small area of uh, East Chester, um, which is uh, another like, apartment complex, as you guys can see. It's uh, pretty simple in, uh, in format, uh, but it was a, a, fun, a fun little build. Um, it's uh, right across the train tracks from Chester Park, which of course is this area that we built in the most recent episode. If you haven't seen it, I'm gonna see if I can remember to put a link down below. Otherwise, you can of course find it through my channel. Um, a quick uh, rundown of, of Chester Park. Uh, this area used to be entirely industrial actually until the, the city of Pine Harbor bought it up or bought parts of it at least. They, they bought the industrial lots here near the the highway because they were the most run down and they built these public housing towers in a sort of a bit to try and solve the housing crisis of the time uh, what do you know it didn't really work and today it's kind of gang infested um, as you guys can see the planning of the area also means that uh, police cars will have pretty poor access to some of these inner towers so it's a bit of a fortress today but yeah, East Chester, which I built off camera here on the other side of the of the, the train tracks, um, is a bit of a better area. It's uh, really not as run down and it's a little more cozy. 
but it's uh, it's kind of interesting how close it is to uh, to one of the the worst areas of the city uh, but i mean this is a theme when we work in city skylines we have to kind of you know areas they become like microcosmos of their own because we we have to adhere to the scale of the game uh, and unless we really want to fry our computers then our cities have to be like miniature models of, uh, of real cities and so the areas that we want to be distinct are probably a little smaller than than in real life anyways with uh, with all that said and done i think it's time that we uh, start focusing on this on this port area the dockyards of uh, port douglas and like i said the the port being such an important area of port douglas the development of it is gonna stretch across uh, quite a few episodes um, today we'll see how far we get but i want to get started with just kind of landscaping the area because we're gonna turn much of this into into land and create our first like ducks and, and piers and then we'll see how far we get because i'd also like to kind of expand on the infrastructure we're gonna have lots of freight um train tracks down here and a freight station or two so that's something i'm gonna have to do as well and i'll probably um, or probably do direct highway access as well um, so yeah quite a bit of infrastructure works uh, will be needed um, we probably won't get to it in this episode but i'm probably gonna have the tram network extend down into the port when it's a little more established to provide ample transportation for uh, all of the workers there um, but we'll see first first we're gonna start with the, the landscaping of course Okay, so that was uh, that was a lot more tricky than I anticipated, and I'm I'm not sure if I used the right technique at all. But a, a quick recap: I, I placed down the at first. I just leveled the whole thing, just raised the, the 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 ground up. Then I placed down the the roads to kind of get an idea of the shape of the of the harbor, and then I used the parallel tool to create. Uh, keys as well. Uh, I might change these up. I just wanted like an outline currently um, And then I've used these um, terraforming networks to with the parallel tool as well to 
you know, here to ensure that I don't have to mess too much with the terrain tools to try and, and adjust the the seabed here. It's uh, much easier using a a. Um, I'm using this terraform network here, which is basically an invisible network that you can then use to uh, to adjust the heights of uh, of uh, of the landscape. Um, but yeah, I think I mean we we've got kind of the 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 big foundation done here i might make some some changes um along the way but i think for now this is this is all right and i'm gonna jump to uh, some of the the big infrastructure works that we're gonna need as well and yeah i don't know if you agree but i'm i'm thinking this is this is an issue this this doesn't look good this looks like a, a you know some post-apocalyptic stuff and I'm pretty sure that the wealthy hipster Sion in a brick will won't be too happy with this. Um, so I'm gonna use my guard powers and swoop this bad boy in here. <laughs> I'm just gonna drag it around, scuba ball the water. Sorry for any uh, inconvenience to the citizens of uh, Brickville. <laughs> Come on, start scooping. If a politician says drain out the swamp, is is this then what they mean? I guess we'd make do with a little recap once more. So uh, yeah, branched off the existing highway interchange here so that you've also got really easy access to this uh, main avenue of the port. So uh, the, the current road layout and the roads I've used uh, aren't finalized uh, by any means. It's uh, pretty much just to kind of kind of get an overview of, of how it's looking now and starting to, you know, uh, figure out some plans in my head for where I want to place certain types of industry. Uh, I'm thinking we'll have a dedicated uh, container uh, ports uh, either uh, alongside this dock or in here, but it's probably gonna be over here. 
and then I'll have different types of of other industry uh, at at other parts of the of the dockyards, and just have a lot of general or generic radar industry as well, lots of warehouses and, and stuff like that. Uh, to really try and, and make it a big area, but I, I think that uh, scale-wise, it's uh, it's it's probably a pretty good fit. Could make it a little bigger, or alternatively, add some additional dockyards up here um, as the city grows. I think with uh, with some some highway connection established, uh, next up is having some uh, freight train uh going in and out of the of the dockyards and i want to add quite a bit of uh, of rail so um, we'll see how it goes it's yeah it's always a little wonky when i work with the uh, with rail networks you guys know it let's uh, give it a go
All right, let's gain a bit of an overview of what we've been building. So train uh, network expansion. I am contemplating finding a different uh, set of train tracks entirely from the workshop. Uh, I think this elevated section, it looks a little slim, right? I mean, damn, this this is some next level engineering um, because I, I, the support here doesn't seem very thick. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm obviously not an engineer, so I, I don't know if that's actually an issue, but um, I'm considering finding something else. Uh, for now, it, it looks quite nice though. So uh, it's a bit random, but I just knew that I wanted a bunch of train tracks um, for, you know, existing freight lines and now defunct freight lines to kind of sprawl all, all over the harbor. Uh, I placed down this uh, grain elevator station as well uh, because I uh, I feel like this is the the place where much of the the regions um, farm uh, st stuff is exported farm stuff. What was the word? I was looking for the word agricultural exports. <laughs> A ten dollar word, but yeah, farm stuff. Let's uh, let's just go with that. Um, so yeah, in this corner, I think we're gonna have like a hub for like grain exports primarily um, to other places. And like I said, out here, I was thinking about getting, you know, building a, a container port. Uh, over here, we've got a, a more traditional freight station with no road access, but yeah, I'm gonna fix that up. Um, and I think this uh, this model is uh, is quite nice, really. Hopefully this will do the trick. Uh, that's fine. I think this is gonna work. It is. And we've actually got our very first freight train coming in here. Um, very nice. I have uh, been editing the specs so that it's it's a little slower than, than right now because obviously it's, whoa, is there any way I can fix that? Yeah, I can. I just have to go around and click. Uh, there you go. That should, yeah, that fixed it. Cool. I'm gonna adjust the maximum speed uh, around these parts so that the, the freight tr uh, trains really come to a crawl when they, you know, descend this ramp. Let me know if this ramp is too steep uh, because I think, you know, in the world of trains, this is pretty steep yeah um but yeah i uh expanded here because i'm thinking like you know it would make more sense for them to expand to to build this pillar for the for the end pillar of the big bridge they built it over here on land as well and i think overall i think we are off to a pretty strong start here um as you guys can see the the freight train it the uh, stopped here and now tons of goods are being transported throughout the region so that's uh, that's really cool um i think this sort of covers what we'll be building for now um because now we've got pretty much the foundation and then we can start we can start focusing on you know select part of the of the ports to develop and uh, yeah it's gonna take some time because as you guys can see the footprint is uh, is actually quite massive right so let's just mark what we would consider the port area something like this actually this section is probably part of our brick wheel but yeah definitely a huge area so yeah it's gonna be a tons of fun to develop this moving forward um if you're stuck with me for this for this long thank you guys so much for watching um i'd really appreciate if you'd uh, give it a like and write a comment and of course if you haven't subscribed and enabled notifications already you are more than welcome to do so and uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye